it's going to be interesting. To proceed, inshallah, uh, we will begin a series of uh, uh, lectures or uh, sessions on Tafsir al Quran, and it is not going to be verse by verse because if it is verse by verse, then we uh, will not finish uh, in 15 20 years. So it will be, inshallah, surah by surah. And we will begin by Surah Al-Fatiha. And how is it going to be Surah by Surah? How do you make Tafsir Surah by Surah? The theme. The, the thing is, each and every Surah of the Qur'an does have a theme and does have a common thread. Core common threads. Uh, but we, we fail to, uh, to recognize the common thread or to recognize the common theme of the Surah because we then right into the verses before we get to know the surah. Before we get to acquaint ourselves with the surahs, we uh, get too involved in the tafsir or the interpretation of the verses, and we don't grasp the, uh, the larger picture. You need, to, you need to walk a little bit backward from the frame so that you can see the larger picture. And then you walk uh, towards the, the the picture, and then you will be able to see the de details of that picture. But to walk back and forth is important. Uh, that is in, in recognition of anything in this life. You do need to see it from a distance, and you need, you do uh, need to see it uh, closer up. Uh, so that. Inshallah, in the series that we will start today, we will be seeing each surah as an entity by itself, as a creature by itself, uh, or not a creature, because those, you know, so the surah in the sense of an entity, because the surah are not created. Uh, these are, the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but by, as, as a theme by itself, as an entity by itself, that is uh, quite distinct so that when someone says Surat Al-Nahl, uh, the bees, then you sort of have a, a mental image of Surat Al-Nahl. Uh, uh, even if you don't memorize Surat Al-Nahl, but you have a mental image of Surat Al-Nahl. If someone says Surat Al-Baqarah, you have a mental image of uh, Surat Al-Baqarah. Now, uh, certainly, we will cover Al-Fatiha uh, in, in our first uh, talk, and then uh, Surah Al-Baqarah may be covered over two, three talks. Surah Ali Amran may be covered over one talk. That is how we finish the Quran, inshallah, in this way. Uh, so it may be a little interesting that the Fatiha will be covered over like 45 minutes, and then Al-Baqarah will be covered over you know, a couple of hours. Uh, but Al-Fatiha uh, is certainly uh, deserving of, uh, of the time. Uh, not that the Baqarah is only deserving of a couple of hours, but we said that if we try to uh, make the Tafsir of the Baqarah verse by verse, then we're not going to finish. Uh, but the Fatiha will be able to do it verse by verse. And the theme, the, the theme of Surah Al-Fatiha that we want to remember, uh, what we want to remember about Surah Al-Fatiha is that we repeat it 17 times a day, right? And that it is the Surah that is most often repeated by us Muslims. So it, it is important to think of Al-Fatiha as a program for a change. It is important to think of Al-Fatiha as a roadmap, to think of Al-Fatiha as uh, your guide, to think of Al-Fatiha as your manual, to think of Al-Fatiha as your key. Because certainly there is something about it that makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala require of us to uh, repeat it 17 times a day. And there is no other surah that we're asked to repeat. Uh, there is actually no other surah that we are asked to recite, right? Uh, you know, that we are obliged to recite. So, in 
uh, in the beginning, so we'll, we'll think of it as like a program for a change. And now, how does it change us? In the beginning uh, of Surah Al-Fatiha, you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. But in the Salah, in the beginning of the Salah, what do you do before you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? In the beginning of the Salah. You say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, or any form of isti'a that you use. So you seek refuge in Allah from the devil, uh, the cursed, or the cursed devil. So A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim is the beginning of the program of change. Because the program of change does not require you, does not require of you to change your essence. It requires of you to return to your essence. And as long as the shaitan stays away from your path, you will return. Because the, your essence is what? Al-Fitra, the genuine inclination. Al-Fitra, the genuine inclination. Inni khalaqtu ibadi hanafa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in, uh, in the hadith Qudsi, inni kharaktu ibadi hulafa fa'atathum shayateen fa'istarathum an dinihim. I created the, uh, my, uh, I, inni kharaktu ibadi, I created my servants hulafa on the straight path. Fa'atathum uh, shayateen, then the shayateen came to them, fa'istarathum an dinihim, and make them deviate from their deen. Make, made them deviate from their path. The Prophet also said, and the hadith is in Sahih, in Bukhari and Muslim, that uh, No uh, no newborn is uh, is delivered except on a state of fitra or in a state of fitra and fitra is your genuine essence it is your core unadulterated pure essence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created then the Prophet وسلم, said that no one is born except on this state of fitra and then his parents, his parents then turn him into Jew Christian or Zoroastrian. Therefore, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim is basically to diffuse the, the work of the Shaitan. It is to keep away the shaitan because once the shaitan is kept away I will be able to make it to my objective I will be able to reach that state of fitra that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for me so all you need to do is to remove the impurities and you go back to your original state so you say a'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim so that he doesn't influence you in this path. And then you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And it, it is translated here in the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Uh, so in the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Bismillah. Okay, so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. When you say Bismillah in the name of, uh, is it translated correctly in the name of? Some people want, uh, so, you know, some brothers suggest that we make it by the name of Allah. Because what you're doing here is what? They say that what you're doing here is, you are seeking the help of Allah you are beginning to by the name of Allah to facilitate for you the recitation, comprehension, implementation, to facilitate the affair for you, what, what will come. Anything that you'll say, 
بسم الله جر ومجرور متعلق بمحذوف والمحذوف تقديره بسم الله آكل بسم الله أشرب بسم الله ألبس so بسم الله that phrase بسم الله uh, pertains to uh, pertains to a verb that has been removed that has been uh, removed from this the, the, the original sentence because it is known, because it is understood, it is implied. Because when you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before you recite, I am reciting by the name of Allah. If you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim before you eat, I am eating by the name of Allah. Or by the name of Allah, I eat. By the name of Allah, I fix this bookshelf. By the name of Allah, I put my clothes on. So that is what it means, right? By the name of Allah. Because the, the power and the might is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Bism by the name of Allah. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. And it did not say Bismillah what? Because it is understood, it is implied. The verb that has been removed, the action that has been removed here, is what you will just do, what you're embarking on, whatever that is. Because Bismillah, you say Bismillah before you eat also. So in this case, it will be Bismillah uh, yeah, and Then, uh, you know, in the name of Allah, I eat, or by the name of Allah. Uh, so is that correct? Should you say by, or in the name of Allah? By. by. Okay. Well, if that is the only understanding, then you should say by. It is actually more expressive of that particular understanding. But in Arabic, don't we say, Bismi man tatakallam, on whose behalf are you speaking? Bismi man, on whose behalf tatakallam, are you speaking? Right or wrong? We do say that. Could it apply here? Yes, it could apply. Because part of this is balag, is a communication. It is a communication to others. It didn't Allah say to the Prophet when he said, Ma ana biqari, ma ana biqari, ma ana biqari, repeated it three times because he truly was not literate. So he said to him, Iqara. بسم ربك بسم ربك الذي خلق read in the name of your Lord who created so read in the name of your Lord he created that this includes two meanings read by the name of your Lord who created so don't worry about the fact that you're illiterate because what you're looking at uh, is the seven the means the worldly means but don't worry about the worldly means because my power is unlimited so you're speaking f from the perspective of the, your worldly means I'm speaking from my, the, the perspective of my unlimited power so Ekra Bismi Rabbik, read by the name of your Lord who created. Created means what? That he uh, creates, he brings something from nothingness to existence. From Adam to Wujud. Someone who brings nothingness to existence is someone of unlimited power. And someone who will not have difficulty making an illiterate man read. So, but this is not only it. Part of it is read on behalf of your Lord. Read on behalf of your Lord. Recite on behalf of your Lord. Communicate this on behalf of your Lord. Convey this on behalf of your Lord. So by the help of your Lord and on the behalf of your Lord. And that is what it means. Bismillah, in the name of Allah, meaning by the name of Allah, by the help of Allah, on behalf of Allah. 
to the point that it, when you read, when you listen to the recitation of the Quran, particularly from like uh, like a perfect reciter like our Imam, it, he, he, you even remove the medium, the intermediate uh, means, which is the person that is reciting. You remove the medium. Uh, Jafar al-Sadiq uh, uh, said, عَجِبْتُ مِنْ مَنْ خَافَ وَلَمْ يَفْزَعْ إِلَىٰ قَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ فَإِنِّي سَمِعْتُ اللَّهَ بَعْدَهَا يَقُولْ فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلِ لَمْ يَمْزَسُمْ سُوْءٍ Jafar al-Sadiq said, I wonder, I marvel at those who fear, who have fear, and they do not run to or seek refuge in or with Allah saying, Hasbun Allah, Allah is sufficient for us. Wanamir Wakil and He is the best disposer of affairs. Because I heard Allah. Do you notice this? I heard Allah say afterwards, Fantalabu bin Amratin min Allahi wa fad lam yam says hum su. Then they by Allah's grace and bounty returned without any harm afflicting or befalling them. But the point is, I heard Allah. He did not hear Allah directly. He heard a reciter. But he removed the intermediate uh, uh, sort of medium between him and Allah and as if he's hearing Allah directly. So the reciter is actually reciting on behalf of Allah because that is the speech of Allah. So Bismillah here by the name of Allah and on behalf of Allah. Allah is the uh, proper name of Allah, of God. And that name Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, هَلْ تَعْلَمُ لَهُ Have you known of anyone who has a similar name? Do you know how many languages there are? Okay, I don't remember. <laughs> but there are thousands of languages. Uh, there are thousands of languages. Do you know of anyone who's called Allah? Any individual, you know, and is, is that a name that people use in any of those languages? Thousands and thousands of languages. Because Allah, Allah uh, turned them away from using His name. All of those millions and billions of people speaking thousands and thousands of languages, having millions of kids every day, they don't use that name. Because Allah turned them away from using His name. Do you know anyone uh, that has His name? That has uh, His name, that is named uh, like Him. And that is the name that is uh, Allah's proper name that no one use, uh, uses. And Allah is uh, and, and I'm not gonna because if I do this, uh, and unfortunately, if if I try to be detailed, uh, we will not be able to cover Fatiha, and then that will be, our, you know, the the biggest and severest and worst break of promise. Is if we're talking about the Bakara in two sessions and we can't cover Fatiha in one session, that will be a big blow to the whole plan. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, Allah comes from Al Ilah. The, the uh, deity worthy of worship, or the deity to be worshipped, or the worshipped deity. Al, the article, the uh, ila, worship deity. Uh, and the, 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 the combination became Allah. And it, it refers to what? It refers to al uluhiyya Right? And al is his worthiness of being worshipped. His worthiness of being worshipped. And al 
means what? Takarif Aydan. It means that he will be given commands and, he, and prohibitions. Right? And Rabb that is mentioned right after Allah. Rabb that is mentioned right after Allah means what? Lord. And what does Lord mean? The caretaker, the maintainer, the sustainer, the caretaker. It has three different levels. One of the, one is the creation. Two is the ownership. Three is the uh, control of, of, the, of the affairs. Al khalq wal mulk wa tabir. That this, you know, khalq is creation. Mulk is ownership. Tabir is that he disposes the affairs of this universe, maintains it, controls it, and so on. That is the rub. So if, if you're talking about sustenance, you're talking about the Rabb. Allah is the, the Rabb is the one who sustains. The Rabb is the one who takes care of you. The Rabb is the one who cures you. So here, it, it, it starts by Allah, Alhamdulillah, not, so the, the things here, Alhamd, thanks, to Allah, Alhamdulillah, thanks to Allah. Uh, and thanks and praise to Allah. Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. Why did he mention Al Uluhiyya before Al Rububiyya? His being the only God, deity, before his being the only Rabb, Lord. If al uluhiyya is about commands and prohibitions, and al rububiyya is about sustenance, which one should be deserving, more deserving of uh, thanks and gratitude? That he sustains you, or that he commands you and prohibits you? Sustains, Sust right? But Allah is, is, is hinting to something else here. That his commands and prohibitions, his commands and prohibitions are more deserving of your gratitude than his sustenance. Because you as, an, as a being without guidance, you're worthless. Not only that. You are created in a state of loss and destruction By the token of time, verily mankind is in loss. So if mankind is in loss, in the entirety of mankind is in loss, except except for those who believe the Amir Salihad and uh, you know that acted in righteousness. Uh, and so on. Then in this case, then in this case, sustaining you as a losing uh, creature, as a creature doomed to destruction, is not the greatest favor. The greatest favor is the Iman that he gave you, the guidance that he gives you, the, the takalif, the burdens of the commands and the prohibitions. Because those commands and prohibitions are the means to your salvation, to your survival. Uh, therefore, he, uh, the, the, the thing that is most deserving of praise and thanks and gratitude is his uluhiyya, is his guidance and his commands and prohibitions. Otherwise, you will be with the rest of the losers. And then comes Rabbil Alameen. So, Alhamdu, thanks to Allah, Rabb, the Lord of Al Alameen, the worlds. And it says Rabb Al Alameen. Uh, what does it, what does it, you know, what does Alhamd? You know, uh, how is Alhamd important in the program of change? Even like in 
if, if you talk to psychologists and counselors and so on and so forth, they'll tell you what they'll tell you that unless you have a positive outlook, don't come to the session. Don't come, you know, try to have a positive outlook before you come to the session and, and so on and so forth. Because to, to, to change, to improve, to progress, to move forward, you have to have that positive outlook. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you that the first thing that you should say is Alhamdulillah, which means thanks be to Allah, which is to show gratitude. Now, certainly, if we do it like we usually do, Alhamdulillah, it's not going to change anything. But if you want to concentrate and to say, you know, I am thanking Allah, then you're thanking Him for things, right? And then you're trying to also capture all of the ni'am that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on you, all of the bounties and favors Allah has bestowed on you, because now you're providing your gratitude. So you want to be alert to the ni'am and the bounties that Allah has bestowed on you to provide gratitude. And that will put you in a different mood, in, in a positive mood, with positive outlook. Yes, I lost to listen to that. You see, you're forced to say this five times a day, even after your only son dies. If your only son dies, you know, last night, you're going to wake up in the morning for Fajr and say Alhamdulillah and repeat it in the second rakam. So you, you are being moved from negativity, you are being moved from your negative attitude, you are being infused with positivity. Remember that you got stroke yesterday, you are not able to move your right arm, you are still able to see and hear and taste and smell. And if you lost some of those two, you are still able to do other things. Uh, and if you lost everything, you just have this faith, Iman, that will, you know, carry you to uh, paradise, then you have so much, and you should be thankful and grateful. If you are still able to stand before me, the very fact that you are able to praise me is worthy and deserving of your praise, because I have guided you and I have enabled you to stand before me and praise me. And that's why Al-Arifu and those who recognize Allah, truly recognize Allah, or those who have true recognition of Allah, say, كَيْفَ نَحْمَدُهُ وَالْحَمْدُ يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى How could we uh, thank Him enough when thanking Him requires more things? Because He is the one who enabled us to thank Him. So there is no way that we will thank him enough because thanking him requires more things. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen is to enforce that positivity on, on yourself. If you think about it, if you think about it, you are saying, you know, all praise, gratitude, and thanks be to Allah, the world of the Lord, the, the, the Lord of the worlds. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen is the first verse in Al-Fatiha. And that, that is why Al-Fatiha is called Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Uh, there is some controversy whether Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is a verse in Al-Fatiha. And uh, most likely that Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen is the beginning of Al-Fatiha and that Bismillah Rahman Rahim is a verse at the beginning of Al-Fatiha to, to uh, declare the commencement of the Qur'an and between the surahs to declare the beginning of new surahs the ending of the last surah and the beginning of a new one And why is that? Because there, you know, there, there are many proofs, but uh, of these proofs, uh, 
uh, Anas radiallahu anhu said, for instance, uh, this is hadith hadith is reported uh, by Bukhari and Muslim that Anas said, I sallayt to khalf Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abi Bakr wa Umar, lam yakun ahadun minhum ya yajhar bi bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I have prayed behind the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr and Omar, none of them used to uh, recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim aloud. Now, th this is a long controversy, we are not going to get into the fiqh of this. Uh, but also, in the hadith that is reported by a uh, Muslim from Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, the, uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said, Qasamtu salata bayni wa bayna abdi. I divided the Salah, Salah here is what? Al-Fatiha. I divided the Salah, which is the Surah Al-Fatiha, between me and my servants. فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدِ الْحَمْدُ وَلِعَبْدِ مَسَأَلْ And for my servant is what he asks for. فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى حَامِدًا يَعَبْدِ وَإِذَا قَالَ الرَّحْمَنُ الرَّحِيمُ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَثْنَى عَلَى يَعَبْدِ At the end of the hadith and we'll come back to this hadith. But the hadith is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divided the salah or the fatiha between me and my servant. So when my servant says Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah says my servant uh, showed gratitude to me or thanked me. My servant thanked me. It started with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, not Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen is the, is the beginning of the, uh, of the Surah. And the beginning of the Surah is to show, uh, to, to thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Did it say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen for what? Yeah, but usually, like when you say Alhamdu, you know, Shukran Lak Ala Kada, or I thank you for this and this and that. But it doesn't say Alhamdulillah for what? Because wa in ta'addu ni'mat Allahi la tuhsuha. Because if you try to count the ni'mah or the bounty of Allah, you shall never make uh, count of them. You shall never be able to make count of them, the ni'am of Allah, the bounties of Allah. Therefore, if you, if you can never make, make count of them, then you should not mention uh, them, because you can never make count of them. Then to not mention them indicates that you're praising Allah for all of his ni'am, those that you count and those that you can't, those that you know and those that you don't those that you recognize and those that you do not recognize. Then Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim And we said Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim uh, or we didn't say Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim but Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim merciful both mean would mean merciful, right? Both are from Rahman, mercy. So what is the difference between Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim? Quickly, Ar-Rahman would be uh, merciful for all, the Muslim and the non-Muslim in this dunya. And the Rahim was interpreted to be showing mercy to his servants who believed in him in the hereafter. So Ar Rahman is larger in spectrum. And that uh, uh, form of superlatives used when we talk about the magnitude, the large magnitude, the large spectrum, the wide spectrum. So Ar Rahman is larger in uh, spectrum because it includes everybody in uh, this life. Ar Rahim is narrower in specter, uh, spectrum, but it is greater in magnitude, because that is the ultimate Rahmah for the believers uh, in the hereafter. And uh, when you begin with this, imagine you're beginning, you know, your Salah, your five, five times a day, 
you're reminding yourself twice in every rak'ah that Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah is the Merciful. So that certainly helps cure the, the, the stress and the worries. The stress which is grief about the past, worries, grief about the future. Maliki al din Maliki al din would mean what? Sovereign of the day of recompense. Sovereign of the day of recompense. And sovereign of the day of recompense. <clears throat> but why is it the why why are we praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because everything that comes here is what part of why we are praising Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, yes, you thank him and praise him for his mercy. But Malik Yawmiddin, the sovereign of the day of recompense, why would this deserve your praise? Hmm? Our goal. Our goal. Yes. Is the yes. Because if the if if there is no day of recompense, and if the day of recompense is control, or if the day of recompense is controlled by many, we should always be in worry and distress and grief. Because justice is rarely fully executed in this life. Justice is rarely fully executed in this life. Then all of the people that have been uh, wrong done, treated unjustly, all of the people that feel that they did not get you know, uh, justice uh, from their enemies, from their opponents, etc., etc. Uh, they this is a reminder for them that don't worry, justice will be fulfilled, and everything is under the control of one, which is Allah, Malik Yawmiddin. He is the owner of the day of judgment, sovereign of the day of judgment. So we will all converge at the end to one, which is Allah. If he is Malik Yawm al -Din, the, he, has, he is in control of Yawm al -Din. This is the, a, a day where all of the creations will be resurrected, and a day of turmoil, a day of major events, magnificent happenings. And if Allah SWT is in full control of this, full ownership, has full sovereignty over this, then doesn't he have full sovereignty over this life. He does. And that is what this refers to. And if we know this, then we will have one deity to serve, and we will rid ourselves of any dualism. Of any dualism. And dualism is what tears up the heart. Dualism is what causes the stress. If you you know, if, if uh, there is nothing that, uh, actually let me show you this. Because this is from the Benson uh, Institute, uh, the Mind and Body Institute uh, at Harvard. They talked about when uh, the belief that all things are in control of one hand. Hmm? <laughs> 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 Dr. 
Dr. Herbert Benson at the Harvard Medical School found that faith quiets the mind, not the somatic. Herbert Benson as well. Uh, faith in God is the most preventative tool for such stress and to promote healthy immune system. This is the, 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 the Mind the Body uh, Institute at Harvard University. Uh, believing that one hand is in control of everything eases the mind. That is what you attest to when you say Maliki al You are reminding yourself that everything is in, in control of one hand, that one is in control of all things. That is the central theme of Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha combines the knowledge of Al-Mufassal, which uh, combines the knowledge of the Qur'an. Mufassal is the last one-seventh of the Qur'an which combines the knowledge of the Qur'an uh, and the Qur'an combines the knowledge of the Tawrah and Injil and Zabur. So, Al-Fatiha combines all that knowledge and the scholars say that the, this verse, these two phrases, have all the knowledge in Al-Fatiha concentrated here. Only you do we worship and only you do we seek help from. Iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'in. I know that we have to uh, go a little bit faster, but uh, inshallah we need to. So, Malik al Medin, Iyakana wa Iyakana Stein. Iyakana wa Iyakana Stein. Why is it speaking in a different uh, style here? The Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen is talking about someone absent, right? Hmm? The, yeah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Maliki Yawm Deen, sovereign of the day of recompense. But all of a sudden, there is something in Arabic called Iltifat, which is to turn. Uh, you know, it's a, a, rather, a style in rhetoric. To turn, which is to make it fact, is to change the direction you know, from speaking about someone absent to speaking about someone present and being addressed, or vice versa. So here there is a default from the absent to the present. You're talking about a third party here, and all of a sudden you're addressing Allah. Uh, wh wh why is that? Why did it begin like this, and then it, now you're addressing the law? Hmm? You're offering your, the, the prayer to him. There could be like multitudes of things to be said here, but uh, you know, um, to, to take one of them is all of what you said all of what you said is to raise your awareness, alertness of his presence, of his existence, of his perfection. Raise your awareness. You're moving from speaking about someone absent to a shuhud. To hmm? You're moving to a shuhud, which is to, to feel the presence of Allah as if He is in front of you, as if you see Him. Because more recognition, the more recognition, the more awareness. Because He said, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman ar Rahim, Maliki Yawm al Deen, 
You recognize His mercy. You recognize His power. You call Him by His uh, greatest name, which is Allah. You call Him by some of His most beautiful names, and so on. So after that, you're, you're, you're ready now to move for, to the state of shuhud, which is to feel that Allah is in front of you and that you are addressing Him directly. Right? And that is not really like too far fetched or anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He holds your fa his face to your face in the salah as long as you don't turn away. As long as you don't turn your face <coughs> away. Uh, and Qasantu Salah Bain Yobain Abdi is all about this. I divided the prayer between me or I divided the Salah Fatiha here between me and my servant. It is all about that subtle, soft conversation. It's a soft, Munaja means what? Soft conversation. And Fatiha is the subtle, soft conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you are, you're making a tifat, you're changing the direction of the speech, you are feeling that you are moving to shuhud or fe the, the, the feeling of the perception of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him. And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara to worship Allah as if you see him and if you don't see him, he sees you. So iyaka na'bud wa iyaka nasta'in only you do we worship and only you do we seek uh, help from. Aidina uh, Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. Sirat al Ladin al Ant Ta'alayim, Gayr al Mardubi Alayim al Adalim, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor, not of those who have evoked your anger or of those who are astray. If you do not consider Bismillah Rahman Rahim to be a verse, uh, which is the position of the majority, by the way. The majority said that Sunnah Rahim is a verse, but it is not a verse of al Fatiha. It is a verse at the beginning of al Fatiha. It does not count as one of the seven verses of al Fatiha. Where would the seventh be? Because al Fatiha has seven verses by agreement. Where would the seventh be? It would be. غير المغضوب عليهم right after right before غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين you will separate that last verse number seven سيرات الذين أنعمت عليهم stop new verse غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين and that is the position of the majority the the the, the position that this Mus'haf uh, goes after is the position of Imam Shafai of Muhammad. He is the one who considers Fatiha uh, uh, to be Bismillah uh, uh, Rahim at the beginning to be part of the Fatiha. But here, you know, you, you find here that it is very balanced. It is truly divided as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Uh, this is uh, reported by Muslim. Qasantu salata bayni wa bayna abdi reported by Muslim from Abi Huraira. Qasantu salata bayni wa bayna abdi. Fa'idha qala al-abd alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen qala Allah ta'ala hamidani abdi wa idha qala ar-Rahman ar-Rahim qala Allah ta'ala athna alayya abdi wa idha qala maliki yawm al-deen qala Allah ta'ala majjadani abdi wa idha qala iyaka na'bud وإياك نستعين قال هذا بيني وبين عبدي ولعبدي مسأل بيني okay ولعبدي مسأل and uh, we will come to the, this so I divided the prayer between me and my servant and when my servant says Alhamdulillah رب العالمين Allah says my servant thanked me and when my servant says Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Allah says, My servant praised me. And when the servant says uh, Malik Yawm al Deen, Allah says, My servant glorified me, Majjadani. 
And when the servant says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Allah says, this is between me and my servant. This is, this is the, the sort of the, 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 the description of the relationship. This is the most concise description of our relationship with Allah. It is bilateral, two ways. We only worship Him and we only seek help from Him. So to Him goes our worship, from Him comes help, support, sustenance, maintenance, and so on and so forth. And to my servant I shall grant to him whatever he asks for. That is when we start to say ihdina, that is when we start to ask. And we will be granted what we ask, what we ask for. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim, guide us to the straight uh, path, the path of those, uh, you know, until the end of, of the verses. But guide us to the straight path, that is the, the, the culmination of the conversation now. The conversation is ending now. The conversation started by the recognition, increasing awareness of Allah to direct dialogue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, defining the relationship with Him to a final request. And that final request, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, هذا الدعاء أجل مطلوب وأعظم مسؤول ولو عرف العبد أو الداعي قدره لجعله هجيرا ولقرنه بأنفاسه فإنه لم يدع شيئا من خير الدنيا والآخرة إلا تضمنه This دعاء إهدنا الصراط المستقيم we talked about We talked about the ultimate favor being the gui that guidance. So, as Ibn Tamir Rahimullah said, this dua is a jalna matloob. It is the, uh, the most honorable request. Wa'ad al Mas'ud. And the greatest petition. And if the da'i, if the one who's making this du'a knows what the magnitude of this du'a, knows what this is about, this is about the ultimate success in the dunya and akhirah, because if they not guide us to the straight path, there is one in the dunya too. The affairs of this dunya, we need Allah's guidance in the affairs of this dunya too. We need Allah's guidance to succeed in this dunya too, not just to the hereafter only. To build a civilization that is mm, not only material, but also moral. But it is powerful materially, and it is uh, uh, sanctified morally. It, is, it combines the two. In order for you to have that, you need Allah's guidance in both aspects. Now, if you know the magnitude, he said, if the da'i knows the magnitude of this dua, he will make it uh, means he will make it his most frequent uh, statement or he, he will make it his habit he will make it his habit most persistent habit basically most persistent habit to keep 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 making it keep making that noah and he would make it with every breath. He would, even if you don't say the whole phrase with every breath, but with, with every breath, you have that feeling. You have that uh, state of mind. Your state of mind is that I am in need of your guidance with every breath. With every breath, you're saying to Allah, I am in need of your guidance. Whenever you speak, I am in need of your guidance. Whenever you stay silent, I am in need of your guidance. Whenever you, you walk, you talk, you act, you, 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 you do anything, or you don't do it. 
you're always thinking, I am in need of your guidance. وَلَقَرْنَهُ بِأَنْفَاسِهِ فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يَرَى شَيْئًا مِنْ فَيْرِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا تَضَمَّنَهُ Because it doesn't leave anything out of the goodness of this life or the hereafter except that it included it. So, this is your program of change. Recognize, re recognize it with every prayer that what you're doing here is you're, you're giving to have greater rec you're, you're developing that greater awareness, alertness of Allah, and you are defining your relationship with Him, and you are asking Him to guide you to uh, His uh, straight path. If you try to do this in the Salah, you know, if, you're tried, if you try to have a present mind in the Salah when you recite the Fatiha, you will be granted what you are asking for. Allah promised. But get your mind, uh, turn it on. You know, give it in, in, in a state of wakefulness, just a state of wakefulness. Because oftentimes, honestly, if the eyes are awake, that does not mean the mind is awake. Because how often do we say things that we don't mean and we don't think about and think of? Uh, you see, the last thing that we'll say is that the Prophet said, كُلُّ أَمْرٍ ذِي بَابٍ This hadith is reported by Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi from Abu Hurairah. He said, كُلُّ أَمْرٍ ذِي بَابٍ لَا يُبْدَأُ فِيهِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ أَبْتَرْ and كُلُّ أَمْرٍ ذِي بَابٍ لَا يُبْدَأُ فِيهِ بِحَمْدِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ أَبْتَرْ A different narration. Every uh, matter of significance. But ذِي بَابٍ means what? كُلُّ أَمْرٍ ذِي بَابٍ Every matter of significance that is not started by the name of Allah is أَبْتَرْ means incomplete. Uh, means deficient, lacking, incomplete. Uh, every affair uh, that is of significance, that is not started by Alhamdulillah, showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is haqta cut off, is cut off. It is missing something, it's cut off. The ban, ban means what? Yeah, the, the, it, it, that has to do with your thinking, your, your, uh, the work of uh, your mind. That is why they say Rahat al the comfort of the bed, which is the comfort of the mind. Uh, so everything that the Kulamri Dibad would mean here what? Everything that has Hakika Zinaya that goes through your mind before it becomes a hakika kalamiya, before it becomes a verbal action. It goes through the mind. Uh, and then there is the hakika karajiya, there is the hakika kalamiya which goes through your mind, and then verbal, and then actual, which is in the outside, in the outside world. But our prayer, is often hakika kalamiya. It doesn't go through hakika. There is no presence of the mind. And without the presence of the mind, then the speech is almost meaningless. And it would not make the, 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 the appropriate effect. It would not make the appropriate uh, effect. And it would not result in that change. In your, in your conditions, and that's why we keep on saying to ourselves, why can't we find it? Why can't we get it? Why is there no peace of mind? Why is there no sweetness of faith? Why am I distressed? Why am I so distracted and so, like, you know, uh, distraught in this life? Uh, because we need to work a little bit harder until we get to that point where we are present in our salah not just our bodies and not just our tongues. We should be present. Our souls should be present in, in this salah. And that's it.